Players are not lab rats, a retrospection on models concerning human experience. Hi, I'm Laureline Chiapello. I'm professor at Ecole NAD Université du Québec à Chicoutimi, uh, which is a video game and a VFX school, and most of my students work in indie or AAA company in Montreal. I've got an academic experience, so uh, I've got a PhD in game design and I'm studying design process, creativity, designer and player experience. And I also have an industry experience. I've been a designer on casual games and nowadays I am doing a lot of collaborative research with several game companies in Montreal. Today I'm going to talk about experience. So as you know, this is a pretty important subject for the video game industry. Uh, for example, on EA website, you can see that they want to create amazing experiences for the players. Or on Blizzard website, you can see that they want to craft the most epic entertainment experiences ever. But what is experience? Um, how is it defined? And do we have a shared vision of the concept of experience? And I was able to think about those questions thanks to the loot boxes controversy. So, as you probably know, loot boxes were akin to gambling and a lot of different actually text in different sources talk about it. Uh, first, I went to see how they were talked about in games journalism. And here you can see Kotaku, where loot boxes are designed to exploit us. I also went to newspaper. This one is in French because it's from Montreal and it's a, a paper about Fortnite saying that it's like a mousetrap. I also went to academic papers in scientific journals. Here you have one from Nature entitled Gaming or Gambling. So in all those papers there was a presentation of experience and what was interesting is that it was always the same way to see human experience. In every text Video games were uh, seen as a place where loot boxes were psychologically akin to gambling. And globally, they all had the same vision of experience. They say things that were globally the same about how this game were making people addicted. So here is a summary of their main argument. These games include mechanisms for initiating and maintaining player engagement that tap into basic psychological principles associated with gambling behavior, for example, variable ratio reinforcement schedules. This was interesting because through this sentence and through this vision of experience, I can see what kind of vision of experience they have. And they actually have a very behaviorist one. Because variable ratio reinforcement schedules are actually related to Skinner's work and the Skinner box. So I think most of you know what a Skinner box is, but just to be sure, it's a box where usually a Skinner will put rats and they have a lever, a water dispenser and a food dispenser. And when you push the lever, you get pellets of food. The classic uh, experience that Skinner made, what about uh, reinforcement? So you have continuous reinforcement where every correct action is rewarded. So every time the rat pushed the lever, it gets food. And you have variable reinforcement where only some correct actions are rewarded. So when the rat pushed the lever, it does not always get food. What is interesting is that in the first experiment with continuous reinforcement, the guests get bored and stopped pushing the lever. However, on the second one, the variable reinforcement, the rats keep pushing again and again and get crazy because they didn't get the food every time. So these variable ratio reinforcement schedules are used by slot machine and loot boxes in video game. And following Skinner's vision of experience, they can create addiction. So this is the view of experience you have in all those texts. And this is globally the behaviorist model. It's a stimulus model, uh, stimulus response model, sorry. And this model of experience is at the heart of behaviorist psychology. Human experience is then a causal chain of stimuli and responses. But what if the behaviorist vision of experience is not the best? 
behaviorism has been criticized. So just to be clear, behaviorism was already a critic of introspectionist vision of experience, where people were thinking of experience as something very personal that you cannot really explain or expose to other out of thinking inside of you. You had to see what was in you and explain it to other, but it was something really subjective. However, behaviorism wanted to understand experience in an objective way, so only by measuring observable behaviors and heavens, and not um, thinking about what is happening inside somebody, but what is visible, what is measurable. And this uh, was the basis of the stimulus response model, where you can actually observe stimulus and the response associated. So globally, the classic behaviorist vision of experience goes like this. You've got a stimulus, like a very loud sound. You've got a mental reaction. So the person's attention is automatically drawn to the sound. They react. And you have the physical reaction, for example, fleeing. But it's not always that evident. So I'm going to give you an example with the snow truck experience. So here in Montreal, we have snow trucks, and they make a lot of noise. And one day, I was in my living room with my sister and my cat. I was reading, my cat was sleeping, my sister was playing on her phone, I think. And the snow truck passes in the street. My sister, what she did was like, you know, turn her head a little bit because it was making a lot of sound, a lot of noise. But, you know, none of us flee. We just stayed in the living room. And me and my cat, we actually didn't really care about the sound. You know, I was reading, so I kept reading. And my cat, I think he did something with his ear, you know, like that. You know, like, oh, something is bothering me, but that's not too important. So we didn't have all the same reaction. And it depended on the condition we were in, but also what we were thinking, what we wanted to do. And we are not just responding to our environment like this. So with this example, I will give you another vision of experience. There are other possible definitions of experience. Cognitivist phenomenology or pragmatism proposed some alternative vision. And with pragmatism, which is the one I want to stress today, the, the researchers say that we don't just react automatically to our environment. Uh, we don't suffer or undergo things passively. We are part of the environment. We have intentions and our experience is continuous. This means different things, but for my example, I was reading, I was casually listening to what was going on and I heard the track, but I didn't react because it was not useful for me. The cat was sleeping in the living room this is actually a choice of the cat. He can sleep in one uh, of his secret places, you know, where he is really hidden. But he was in the living room with me and my sister, so he knew that this can happen, and he chose not to react too much and not to move, actually. And my sister did react a little bit because she didn't know about the snow truck. So the continuity of experience for her was not here because she didn't know about it, but she didn't flee, you know? She was just like, okay, this is kind of a weird sound. So we don't re overreact to every stimuli in our environment. Imagine driving and reacting to everything. That would be crazy. Also, sometimes it's difficult to say what is a stimulus and what is a response. I was reading, I was casually listening to everything around me. So is not responding to the track a response? This is not very clear, you know? So the way we see uh, experience in a pragmatist way is very different. The most important thing is that we are in a kind of transaction with the environment. We are not just suffering it. So to make it clearer for a video game, I try to do a fishing thought experiment, which is the compulsive fisherman. Let's imagine you're in a world where you can fish. It can be water warcraft or animal crossing, whatever, you're fishing. Let's say sometimes you get nothing, sometimes a fish, and sometimes a rare fish. Let's say one out of five times for this example. On a special day, 200 rare fishes can be exchanged for a special horse. 
Now you're a game user researcher and you can see on your screen that the player casts the line around a thousand times and gets the horse. Then they continue fishing hundreds of times. Let's imagine they pay each time the fish. So this is kind of like a loot box. Is this player an addicted gambler? Is the gamer like a rat in a skin and box? And did the designer create an addictive system? Most of the time, when I ask this question to my students, they find reason, they find explanations. Nobody really thinks that the player is just addicted to fishing. And a kind of answer that you can imagine is that I wanted a second horse for my spouse. She's busy today and will miss the event, so I did it for her. It was boring, but now we can ride really fast together. So, this idea of what is experience is actually complicated. And there is a dreaded question that you might have had in the past. When somebody asks you, well, if you can hook people to stupid little games, why don't you use your power to do something better? And most of the time, game designers are like, mm, it's more complicated than that. And I like the question and the answer, because it shows that actually experience is not just stimulus response. And the fact that we answer it's complicated shows that maybe the behaviorist model is not the best. It's another hint that it might be limited. So how about you? How do you define experience? What is your philosophy? But also, what does it mean in practice? I have examples of method and approach that are not pragmatic. If you tend to use closed question questionnaires, non-participant observation, if you value the objectivity of the researcher, and if you tend to decompose your participants into variables, you're not in a pragmatic approach, you're more in a behaviorist one. However, you can try open-ended questions questionnaire. You can also do participant observation and play with your players. You should also acknowledge and value the researcher's subjectivity. If you know about the subject or about a game, this is good, this is interesting. And finally, participants are human beings and you do not reduce their experience to a few variables. If you do that, you're in a more pragmatic approach. So, in conclusion, I think players are not lab rats and the definition of experience as only a causal chain of stimulus response is an oversimplified model. Pragmatic model shows the importance of considering the relationship with the environment and the richness of human experience. Players are real human beings. Moreover, clarifying the concept of experience in game user research is useful because it will orient the kind of method you use and the type of result you will get. Thank you for listening to my presentation. I hope it will give you uh, food for thought. You can reach me uh, on Twitter or by email. And I wish you a very pleasant end of the summit. Have a nice day and bye to you all.